I'm going to invite you to take a seat and grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4 is our text. If uh, you don't have a Bible with you and you're in the room here at Sweetwater or in Parker, then uh, uh, that's okay. If you're in Sweetwater, grab one of the Bibles in the seats around you. Uh, turn to page 1021, and you'll be able to find uh, the passage and follow along with us. If you're in Parker, uh, get up and move to the table at the back middle of the room. Grab one of the Bibles there. Turn to page 1021 and, and join along with us. And as always, if you don't have a Bible uh, and you're at any of our campuses, you are welcome to take one and, and take it with you. With one condition, we want you to read it. Because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Uh, and, and if you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible, we want you to have one as well. So just uh, let us know. Message us, email us. Uh, we will get you a Bible, whether we mail it to you or whether we deliver it to you. We want you to have God's Word because we know God will change your life as you read and apply it. Hey, I just have to brag for a moment. Uh, the, the, the music's been great, uh, but we're being led by uh, one of our, our student interns, Dylan, uh, one of our former student interns who's now at college learning how to be a worship leader, Meredith and, and Gina, and they did a marvelous job. And I just love the way we invest in our students. And uh, just a beautiful way on, you know, on this holiday weekend. And by the way, let me just say this. Thanks for being here and tuning in because I realize this is like January 1st and most people are like, what do you do on January 1st? You recover with, from your hangover and you... Uh, I didn't say most people. I didn't say you people. Uh, besides, it's 5 o'clock at night. You're probably over it by now. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, you're recovering from your hangover and you're watching football and, uh, you know, doing whatever New Year's Day traditions you have, although they kind of killed that with college football playoff because now all the big games are on New Year's Day. But uh, anyway, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for being here. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I know. Are you excited about 2022? Yeah, see, there's a lot of uncertainty in those answers. <laughs> Yay, we're, yeah, we're really sure. But, you know, let's be honest, the last two years have surprised us. They have perplexed us. They have frustrated and disappointed us. So what do we do with a new year, a new day? What do we do with this thing called 2022 that's right here in front of us on day one? How about follow Jesus? How about follow Jesus? Jesus. I mean, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God, Savior of the world, and you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, that he was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, follow Jesus. I mean, you go, well, it's got to be more complicated than that, doesn't it, Pastor Chad? No, it doesn't. Commit your life to following Jesus. That's what you've already said you were going to do. How about living up to what you've said you're going to do? And if you're here in one of our campuses or online and you have not yet decided to follow Jesus, the best thing that you can do this year is follow Jesus. I mean, he wants to forgive your sins. He wants to give you eternal life. And um, look, nothing is going to be as important as the decision to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we would love for you to make that decision today it's the best way you can start 2022. And if you want to make that decision, you can make it in your heart right now. Just talk to God and say, I surrender. Sing that song we just did. Uh, you can fill out one of the Connect cards so that we uh, can follow up with you and talk with you about it. Our prayer team is going to be here at the front. They would love to pray with you after the service if you're in one of our campuses. Uh, and, and, and don't, but don't let this pass. Make that decision to follow Jesus. Now, here's the thing. We want to help everyone follow Jesus. I mean, that, that's what we do, why we do this. That's why we're glad you're here. We want to help you follow Jesus. So for the next 52 weeks, for the next 12 months, for the next one year, all of 2022, we are going to be teaching every single week about Jesus. Now, you guys are like, you're a church, you're preaching the gospel, you're always talking about Jesus, right? Yeah, I know, sometimes before, sometimes we're Old Testament, you know, foreshadowing Jesus, and sometimes we're, you know, we're going to be focusing on the story of Jesus, the gospel of Luke, because if we follow Jesus, we know that, that we're going to be blessed and God will change our lives. Now, here's the thing. If you follow Jesus, God's going to change your life. He may not change your circumstances. He may not change the politics. He may not change the economy. He may not change the pandemic. But he'll change you. And that's what we're all about. Leading people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. 
So we're beginning in Luke chapter 4. It's just after Jesus was baptized. And so this is the beginning of his ministry. Picking up Luke 4 verse 1. And this is the account of the temptation of Jesus. It says, And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan where he was baptized and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. So for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. And when they were ended, he was hungry. Some of you can't go 40 minutes without getting hungry. (laughs) Jesus went 40 days. And then the devil said to him, If you really are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And the devil took Jesus up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me. And I will give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And then Satan took, Je- took Jesus to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, it is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Jesus, the Son of God, is alone with the Father. He's fasting and he's praying for 40 days. I mean, that's like a prayer retreat on steroids. And yet, in the midst of that, during those 40 days, Jesus is tempted. He's tempted by Satan. He's tempted by the devil. And so I want you to know that all of us face temptation. All of us face temptation. I'm going to face temptation. You're going to face temptation. The person sitting next to you is going to face temptation. Your kids are going to face temptation. Your parents are facing temptation. Everyone faces temptation. I mean, the Son of God, the Savior of the world was tempted you're going to get tempted too. Okay, that's just a reality. And and I want you to know that. (laughs) Some of you are like, that's good news to start the year off with. (laughs) Well, congratulations, it is. It's a reality for all of us. In fact, we're influenced by evil uh, several different ways. First of all, we're influenced for evil by our own desires, the things that we want to do. Our flesh, our bodies crave things. And, 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 you know, in fact, the Apostle James says that we're carried away by our own desires, our own lusts, and, and we think about it, and then we start planning it, and then we do it, and, and then sin gives birth to death. So, I mean, uh, we just crave rebellion because we're sinners, and all of us have our flavor of sin that we like. It's kind of like going to Baskin Robbins or Thrifty, right? You guys ever do that? How many flavors does Baskin Robbins have? 31 flavors. Do you like any of them? Do you like all of them? Yeah, see, there's a few weird ones that go, yeah, I like them all. <laughs> I'm sorry, you have deformed taste buds. But, um, but here's the thing, all of us like a flavor. You got a flavor, you might like 10 flavors, you might like two flavors, you might like 25 flavors, but you all have a flavor, something. That's how it is with sin. You might like all of them, or you might just like one of them and think that people who give in to the others are somehow broken. Guess what, we're all broken because we all like sin. That, that's just how we are. We have a taste for it, and we're sinners. So we're, we're influenced by evil, by our own evil desires. And we're influenced for evil by the culture and the people around us. We live in a sin-filled world. Since Adam and Eve rebelled against God in the very beginning, look, we've all been contributing, and so we're surrounded by people who are sinners. I already covered that. You're a sinner. So are the people all around you. And sometimes when we hang around with people who are dedicated to sinning, guess what we do? We join in with them. The Apostle Paul said, don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. You hang out with people who are rebelling against God, chances are you're going to be rebelling against God. That's why Proverbs says the one who walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools suffers harms. Some of you need to probably upgrade your friend groups. But that's just a, hey, you know what? The best way to do that? Join a life group. 
Join a life group. I'm not saying everybody in life group is idiot proof, but uh, as a group, you'll probably do better than on your own. So I'm just saying, if you want to do better on your friend's side, join a life group, and they will help you in that uh, thing. And if they don't, you can tell me, and we'll fix it or something, okay? And, and then, of course, so we're tempted by our own desires, we're tempted by the people around us, and we're tempted by the devil, by Satan, by the evil one, the enemy. And Satan's desire is to destroy your life. Jesus put it this way, John chapter 10, he said, the thief, talking about Satan, comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, to destroy. That's all Satan wants to do to your life, to you. Steal, kill, and destroy. And he will tempt you to choose rebellion. So as a follower of Jesus, you are Satan's enemy. Therefore, you're a target. Congratulations, you're in a war. The moment you said yes to Jesus, the moment you committed to follow Jesus, the moment you asked him to be your savior and confessed him as Lord, you became an enemy of Satan. He hates you. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life. That's it. And, and if you're like taking this Jesus thing seriously, and you're like, I really want to follow Jesus, and I really want to do better, and I really want to live for God, then you're up on the priority target list. Satan wants to take you down. Congratulations, you're in a war. Read about it, Ephesians chapter 6. Okay? And Satan is going to invite you to blow up your life. That's what he does. He's going to encourage self-destruction. So the reality is, um, you're never going to outgrow temptation. Let me say that again. You're never going to outgrow temptation. This was an annoying reality to me. Can I, can I just be honest and confess a little bit? So as a teenage boy, I, you know, not only was committed to Jesus, but I was surrendered to ministry, and I hated the fact that, that I fought the battle with lust. Any other guys want to confess that you fight the battle with lust? Okay, okay. <laughs> two hands went up. I need to be preaching about honesty here. <laughs> Guys, uh, let me just re rephrase that. I know you're either fighting the battle with lust or you're dead, okay? So, so here's the thing. And I thought, you know, I'm a teenage boy. I can't wait till I get married because I don't have to fight the battle of lust anymore. And God gave me Merelda, and we got married, and we had a great marriage. And I thought lust is going to go away, and I was an idiot because it didn't go away. And, and then I thought, well, I just have to pray more and read the Bible more, and I'll get into ministry more, and I serve more, and lust will go away, and it didn't go away. And I thought, well, if I get old, uh, then it'll go away, and it doesn't go away. <laughs> no, I still have to fight the battle every single day. And, and it, I, don't, I don't like it, and it irritates me, and I've had a conversation with God, and he just told me to suck it up and deal with it. <laughs> okay, because that's what all of us have to do with temptation. You're not going to outgrow it. And you're never going to achieve a spiritual state where you are so holy that you are beyond temptation. Okay, I've met people who thought they were, but they kind of stumbled as this sin of pride was what they were living in. And, uh, and they were deceiving themselves, but nobody else. Can I just tell you, you're not going to get there. Jesus is God in the flesh. Think about that. God in the flesh. He is perfect. He's sinless. And he is still being tempted. We are in a battle. And, and so if Jesus was tempted, Satan's going to tempt you. Every single one of us is going to face temptation. So the question is, are you going to give in to it or are you going to fight the battle? Are, are you going to do battle with it? Okay, so I'm hoping that you're going to learn from Jesus how Satan's going to tempt you and how you can stand strong and win the battle against temptation. So let's talk about how Satan's going to tempt us, okay? Because we see three examples in the life of Jesus, three situations how Satan is going to tempt every single one of us who's a follower of Christ. Because what does he want to do? He wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Okay, the first one is this. We are tempted to satisfy desires. Pick up at verse 2 again. For 40 days, Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by the devil, and he ate nothing during those days. And when they were done, he was, in, he was hungry. He was hungry. And the devil said to him, if you're the son of God, command the stone to become bread. See, I've actually been there. If you go to Israel with us next year, 
<laughs> Assuming COVID doesn't kill it again. Uh, if you go to Israel with us next year, you're going to see that area, that wilderness. And there's all these rocks. And we, we, look, we, we get it here. We know what rocks look like in the desert. But theirs are like really rounded. And they look like little loaves of bread all over the place. It's pretty cool. Like, oh, now I get it. Turn these stones that look like a loaf of bread into bread. Why? Because you're, you're God. You can do this. You have the power to do this. You can indulge yourself. Go ahead. Feed yourself. Satisfy the desire. Can I just tell you the, the simplest form of temptation is desire? Our physical needs and wants. Your body already wants food, drink, sleep, sex, and safety. It, it, it wants comfort. And Satan amplifies those natural desires to unhealthy places. That's what he does. You want it? Let me just turn up the volume and get you to overindulge in it. Right? Satan says, indulge yourself. You deserve it. Come on, tell me you've never had that thought. I deserve it. That's right. I, I really deserve it. I need it. I've earned it. It's been a rough day. It's been a rough week. It's been a month, rough month. It's been a rough year. I deserve it. I'm going to treat myself. Satan's turning up the volume. Hey, eat some more. It tastes good. Yes, it does. Hey, you guys want to confess together? Anybody else need to confess gluttony this past week? <laughs> I was guilty. I can't tell you how many cartons of chocolate peanut butter ice cream I have finished <laughs> off. But it's not healthy. Because he's like, eat some more. Go ahead, another scoop. It's not going to hurt you. <laughs> yeah, it will. Have another drink. Come on, have another drink. It'll help you to relax. You'll have fun. You'll feel so much better. Have another drink. Go ahead, use the drugs. Use the drugs, you know the pain is overwhelming. You need to escape that pain. It's gonna numb that pain for a little while. Go ahead, take another hit, take another dose, take another shot, whatever. Come on, embrace the forbidden fruit. It's what you want. You know it's what you want. And see, I, I, it, truthfully, Satan's telling the truth. It is what our bodies want. It is what our flesh desires. And they're all selfish desires, and they'll all steal and kill and destroy us. Of course, in the midst of those desires, Jesus said, Luke chapter 9, verse 23, if anyone wants to come after me, he must do what? Deny himself, take up his cross daily, and come follow me. If you want to take this Jesus thing seriously, it involves self-denial, which means that, you know, all those selfish desires that you have, all those fleshly desires, there's a point where you have to say, no, I'm not going to do that. So Satan is going to tempt you to satisfy your desires. And then, of course, we're tempted to take shortcuts. We're tempted to take shortcuts. Pick up at verse 5. And the devil took Jesus up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, to you, I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it'll all be yours. It'll all be yours. Now, understand, Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords, but he had to die to get there. He suffered a horrible, anguishing death on a cross to get there, right? He endured the cross, despising its shame, so that he could conquer sin and death and hell and become King of kings and Lord of lords. And Satan offers Jesus a shortcut to the end goal, sort of. Right? Because it's not really the true end goal, but it looks kind of like the end goal. It's very similar looking in appearance to the end goal because Satan had the temporary authority, but he didn't have the permanent standing. In that moment, he had control over all these kingdoms and he had the authority over all these kingdoms, but it wasn't going to last. He was already a defeated general. He already knew the end was in place. And he said, hey, Jesus, I'll give you this. So you don't have to suffer the cross. You don't have to endure the pain. You don't have to endure the shame. It's the easy way. Come on, take the easy way. All you got to do is worship me. Satan offered the easy way. He offered the way of compromise. He's going to tempt you to compromise. Just compromise your convictions. Compromise your morals. Compromise your values. Compromise your beliefs just a little, just once. Come on, it's not going to hurt anything. No one's going to know. It'll cost you less, and you'll get what you want faster. Both lies, by the way. 
both absolute lies. After all, Satan is the father of lies. He's always going to tell you lies. Partial truths and lies. You'll get there faster. It won't cost you as much because it'll cost you your integrity and your credibility and you won't get where you want at all. You get to where you think you want, but it'll all collapse and you won't have it. See, the reality is God has a plan and a path to bless you and bless me. Let me say that again. God has a plan and he has a path to bless your life. He has a way to live your life that's going to result in blessings. And, uh, but it means that we have to live our lives to please God and we have to trust God to bless us. Here's the hard part. We have to trust God to bless us. Because here's what we want to do. We want to take the shortcuts and we want to bless ourselves and we want to get to where we think we ought to be. That's what we try to do. Well, yeah, I'll just take the shortcut. I'll bless myself. It's going to be faster. Way to blessings, even if it doesn't last. Um, but think about it. We try to manipulate the outcomes. Why? How do we do it? Well, I'm going to pad the revenue. I'm going to cheat on my tests or my taxes. I'm going to refuse to follow the rules, even when the rules are stupid. I'm going to break them. And see, what Satan is trying to do is destroy your credibility as a follower of Jesus by compromising your integrity. He said it again. He wants to destroy your credibility as a follower of Jesus Christ by getting you to compromise your integrity. Because you can't represent Jesus unless you reflect his character. And we try so often, don't we? We wear the Christian badge with honor, Calvary shirt, Calvary thing on our car. You know, yeah, I'm, I go to Cal, yeah, I go to Calvary. But are you? It's not, none of that matters. Are you representing Jesus in those ethical, moral decisions of your day-to-day -day life, and the way you treat people, the way you speak to people, in the way that you do business, in the way that you do life? I mean, maybe you compromise in big ways, or maybe in subtle little ways, and all of it results in a big fall. See, according to Jesus, there are two paths. The path is wide, and the way is easy. That leads to, you guys know the answer? Destruction. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The path is wide and easy that leads to destruction, but narrow is the path and difficult is the way that leads to life. Satan will tempt you to take shortcuts. And then, of course, we're tempted by pride. We're tempted by pride. We're tempted to show off. Verse 9 and Satan took Jesus to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, if you're the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Did you catch that? Satan's quoting scripture now to Jesus. See, Satan knows the Bible better than you do. He'll quote scripture. He'll try to convince you that, that pride is okay and showing off, showing off is okay. Because what he wanted Jesus to do was, hey, you want to see something really cool? Watch this. Right there in the middle of Judaism, right there in the middle of Jerusalem, where all the religious leaders are and all the political leaders are and all the people are as they're coming to worship at the temple, and Jesus, do something dramatic, do something really cool that everybody will see and applaud and celebrate and want to make you king. Show off your power. I mean, it's the ultimate temptation of, look what I can do. I won't even ask how many of you have hurt yourselves trying to, look what I can do. <laughs> See, we all want to look good. We all want, you know, for people around us to be impressed. We all love the affirmation and applause but are you living for that or are you living for Jesus? Are you living for the approval of other people or are you living for Jesus? I mean, if Jesus had jumped off that, that pinnacle, that temple, it'd be like the equivalent of getting a million likes on social media. He'd gone viral in that moment, even when it wasn't a thing. So are you trying to promote yourself or are you letting God do it? So that's what pride hits at. Pride hits at our, at our hearts where we go, hey, I deserve the recognition. I deserve the applause. I deserve the reward. I deserve that. I should get the, the, the attention over that. 
I have to be right. I have to win the argument. I have to have the last word. There's a warning that is oft repeated in Scripture. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6 says this. The Apostle Peter, who was somewhat of an arrogant guy himself, said, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Wait, just hear that again. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time, he may exalt you. At the proper time, God will lift you up. At the proper time, God will give you the applause and the recognition that you need, not at your time, not in your desire, not in your way, but in God's time and in God's way, he will lift you up. Yet how often do we give in to that temptation of pride? Got to win the argument. Got to be right. Got to be best. We want the respect. We want the accolades. We want the reward. And Satan tells us this will satisfy. If you get that, all that attention, if you get all that recognition, if you get all that reward, then you're going to be satisfied. And it's a lie. Because then you start seeking that over and over and over again and you sell your soul to being great instead of being godly. And Jesus calls us to a life of humility, a life of serving. And there are too many times that he taught that for me to say. So I'm just going to repeat 1 Peter 5. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So we all face temptation. Your temptation might be to indulge desires. It might be to take shortcuts. It might be to show off. It might be all of the above. But Jesus resisted the temptation and gave us an example to follow. And he showed us how we can win the battle against temptation as well. Because not only did he come to redeem us, but he showed us how to live. And we can win the battle with temptation by the word of God. Okay, by the word of God. Every temptation that Jesus faced, he responded with what? Do you guys know? I just read it to you. He he quoted scripture. Think about it. He's God in the flesh. He's the one who authored the inspiration of the holy scriptures. and, And he's got all power, all authority. And what does he do? He quotes scripture to Satan. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You know? You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. He just responded to Satan with the word of God, with scripture. That was how he overcame temptation. Now, I'm assuming that you want to win the battle with temptation. Do you guys want to win the battle with temptation? Can't hear you online. Do you guys want to hear that win the battle with temptation? So, you know. It was funny because about half of you answered and some of you nodded and some of you were like, I don't know, I'm kind of enjoying temptation right now. (laughs) See, I'm assuming you really want God to bless you. And so if you want God to bless you, that means you really have to follow Jesus. And if you really want to follow Jesus, then you need scripture in your life so you can follow Jesus and win the battle with temptation. So in Ephesians chapter 6, I've already referenced this once. If you you want to hear about the spiritual battle, then read Ephesians 6. Uh, you can go home and do that tonight. It's, uh, uh, but, uh, but in it, it says that the sword of the Holy Spirit is the Word of God. Now, in Ephesians 6, it talks about the armor of God, and it tells you about all these defensive pieces of armor that you have uh, as you follow Jesus. But then it ends with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The only offensive weapon that we have is Scripture, and, and here's the reality. In this fight of the battle of temptation, some of us are going to war with a butter knife. You know who I'm talking about. We're going to war with a butter knife. You go, what, what do you mean? Uh, what I mean is we don't know what the Bible says. We don't know what it says. I, I hear people all the time, well, somewhere in there it says this. And sometimes I go, yeah, I'll tell you where. And sometimes I go, no, it doesn't. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a verse somewhere, and I know it's not there. <laughs> Pretty sure. Some people go, well, uh, I think it's, uh, you know. And, and here's the thing. We're, we're trying to fight an enemy that knows Scripture better than us, and we're doing it with a butter knife, not a sword. 
So if you want to consistently win the battle with temptation, you must read, study, and apply God's Word. Let me say it again. If you want to win the battle with temptation, you have to read, study, and apply God's Word, which is why we give Bibles away to people, because we want you to read, study, and apply God's Word, which is why our, our, one of our essential doctrines, the first one listed is we believe the Bible is the inspired, inerrant Word of God that tells us what to believe and how to live. That's why we teach the Bible. It's why our first core value is relatable truth, where if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Some of you are nodding your heads. You're like, yep, we get it. We hear you talk about this all the time. So today, I want you to win the battles. I want 2022 to be a year that you grow in your faith and you win the battle against temptation over and over and over again. I want to see you have victory in your faith. So here's where I'm going to challenge you to do. Three things, three steps to winning more of the battles with temptation. Okay. And I'm going to encourage you as an individual. I'm going to encourage you as families to do this. I'm going to encourage you as life groups to do this. Three things, okay? Here they are. I don't think they're in your notes. So you're going to have to write them down if you're taking notes. This would be a really cool time to write them down in, in your Gospel of Luke right next to the, the sermon thing that we're preaching on. But first one is this. Commit to attend or watch every weekend's service. Why? Because we're teaching on Jesus. Every one of them is going to build on the other. It's going, to, it's going to be all about Jesus, how Jesus lives, how Jesus deals with people, how Jesus deals with temptation, how Jesus overcomes. You want to follow Jesus, you've got to know what Jesus said. We're giving you the resource to do it with that Gospel of Luke where you can take notes or draw pictures or do whatever you want to, make grocery lists during the sermon, however the Holy Spirit informs you. But can I encourage you to write it down? We all know you'll remember it better if you write it down. So, attend or watch weekend worship. Secondly, this is a little, bit, a little bit harder. I'm gonna challenge you to read the Bible this year. Read the entire Bible this year. In the next 12 months, in the next 365 days, I'm gonna challenge you to do a daily Bible reading plan. Okay, if, if you wanna know what I'm doing, I'm doing on your, you, you guys have the YouVersion app? I didn't bring my phone. There's information in your bulletin about how you can get the YouVersion app. Go to the App Store in whatever kind of phone you have or iPad you have. Download the Bible app. You can get our sermon notes. You can get the weekend sermon notes uh, filled in, the blanks ahead of time. You can win all the bets with your friends. Uh, you can uh, see the text right there. You can make notes online if you want to. But here's the thing. Uh, there's a reading plan on that every single day. I'm doing this with my life group. It, it's the uh, Bible in One Year, 2022, by Nikki Gumbel. Nikki Gumbel is the guy who wrote the author, uh, Alpha series uh, that we teach. It's for new believers. It's got a devotion where it kind of tells you a little bit of background about the scriptures, and then you read the scriptures. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes every single day. You can even listen to it if you don't know how to read, okay? So, I mean, if you don't like to read, you, they'll, he'll read it to you, okay? So, not, you know, you can just do it that way. Look, but uh, go ahead and do it. Because you're all sitting here right now going, yeah, I want to know Jesus better, and I should read the Bible more, and I should do that. I don't know the Bible. I got a butter knife, uh, one of the little ones, not even a full one. Uh, and, and I'm trying to do battle with that. So read the Bible. We're giving you a tool to do it. It's day one. You guys aren't even behind. Tomorrow they're going to be a day behind. Sorry, Parker, you guys are a day behind. Okay, so pick it up and catch up this afternoon. Like, but you can do this. It's doable every single day. And I'm doing it with my life group. I'm sharing it with my life group. So we're holding each other accountable. Hey, did you, are you doing the reading? Which is another reason to be in a life group because it'll you know, encourage you on to love and good, good works. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that you can do if you'll commit today to do it. And then the third thing is, I'm just gonna throw this out there. This is like the, the you know, farthest challenge. Memorize at least one verse from the Bible a month. Memorize it. Commit it to memory. How about starting with 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6? God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may exalt you at the proper time. Because when you memorize, then the Bible's with you all the time. Now, if you do all that, you commit to do all those things, it won't radically change your life overnight. I'm just telling you, it won't suddenly, like, you'll be super Christian or anything like that. 
But you'll win more battles with temptation this year, and you'll be much stronger in the faith and closer to Jesus at the end of 2022 than at the beginning. And you'll be better at following Jesus if you do this. Look, we're all going to be tempted every single day this year. I want to win more battles than I lose. How about you? Let's pray. Father, you know how weak we are. You know how lazy we are. You know that we speak of commitment and desire to follow you and sometimes do so little to make that happen. So right now we confess, we repent, and Lord, we commit. We want to to be better followers. We want to live in your power. We want to know your word. We want to be able to overcome temptation. We want to represent Jesus in the way that we live. So we ask that you would do a work in us beginning today uh, and throughout 2022. And God, it might seem like an impossible goal to read the Bible every single day this year. But we know with your help and with the encouragement of our friends, our families, our life groups, that we really can do this. So we invite you to change us, speak truth to us so that we can win the battle and so that we can lead people to a life-changing relationship with the Son of God and Savior of the world. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.